how do you know whether you're idolizing marriage or the idea of marriage? That's a good question. Well, there's a couple clues you can look at to indicate whether you're idolizing marriage or the pursuit of marriage. Mm -hmm. And I made a few notes here. First of all would be placing marriage above your faith. And what would that look like? Well, it would look like compromise. Yeah. You're willing to lower your standards and compromise your convictions, values, and beliefs mm -hmm. for the, so that you can get married under the false assumption that oh, somehow we'll work things out after we're married. Mm -hmm. That would be a common one is just being willing to reduce your standards of your personal faith and integrity. Mm -hmm when you see red red flags in the other person where they're not on the same page as you mm -hmm. um if you treat it as a solution yeah to what you're going through um of course social yeah aspects of it too i mean if if you see marriage as an escape or a solution to your problems like mm -hmm. if i could just get married i could overcome this addiction yeah well, oh, that's like a uh, 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 warning, <laughs> blaring warning sign. Another one is uh, a common one for girls is to get out of uh, a very bad home life mm -hmm. to again to escape. Yeah. Um, or you're looking for your provider. Or you're looking, or the women they're looking for a father figure in a husband. Yeah. That's going to cause idolizing you know, marriage as a solution mm -hmm. to a father-shaped hole in the heart that or, or, a husband may or may not be able to meet that need. And even if he tries, it often dissolves into a codependency. Yeah. And uh, there's some form of control and, you know, a breakdown of communication right. and connection. Yeah. And it often dissolves and doesn't, doesn't work out good at all in the end. Or financial struggles. There's so many ways that we look at marriage and we make it an idol. And the the number one thing that actually gets us to choose marriage as an idol is a societal script and pressure from our peers and our community. Getting married because of pressure from others. Mm -hmm. Putting uh, certain age. I need to qualify. I need to qualify that. Qualify. <laughs> so if if you're getting married because somebody, a family member is pressuring you to marry this or that person, mm -hmm. the idolization in that case would be fear of man. Yeah. Instead of you making your own decisions, taking responsibility for that and asking the Lord for wisdom mm -hmm. as you move forward. Um Ignoring red flags, we covered that one. Here's a, here's a good one. Seeking validation through a partner. Mm -hmm. If you're looking for a sense of identity in your friends or a dating relationship or a marriage, that would be uh, a weak foundation. Yes. You want your validation to come from God alone mm -hmm. to where you are a whole person with or without your spouse. Yes. And you want to marry someone who is walking in that same level yeah. of understanding so you have two whole people coming together mm -hmm. and that would be more like one plus one equals 11 yeah or at least 10 <laughs> <laughs> you know it's not one half plus one half equals one yeah when and that, that i think that's very important to focus on is that when you're single you are not missing parts of you you are a, a whole person so you need to focus on your development and who you are developing your character and who god says that you are and focus on what is your mission in life focus on what kind of vision you have for a life what is your purpose here and then when you get married and find the partner for life then you actually are equally yoked and like oxen who can pull much more weight together and not doubling our what we can put pull but actually more than that yeah two an ox can pull twice its weight 
but two ox and yoke together equally, each pull three times their weight. Yeah. So there's a multiplication factor when you are equally yoked. Mm -hmm. So the degree to which you are equally yoked with a spouse is the degree to which you'll be able to multiply mm -hmm. your accomplishment of the mission on your life. Yeah. So, but then go, let's go back to what we talked about. You know, I can share this example with you. I wanted to be married since I was one year old. Can you imagine that? And had a beautiful fairy tale, kind of a imaginary thought of what the marriage would look like. And that actually was driving me forward. Although, interestingly enough, marriage was above God in my life because I didn't know much of that growing up. And so when I was looking for a man to fill into the gap to create the marriage, I would always look and be like, is he the one? Is he the one? Oh, is he the one? Oh, maybe that one is the one. Oh, maybe this one is the one. So it became so above and beyond, you know, uh, an idol that I actually have to um, give it to God and say, God, if I'm, I don't want this to be an idol, I'm just going to lay it down. I'm going to do whatever I need to do on my part to be the wife that you created me to be. And whenever you know, I'll do the action items or steps that I need to do, but then I'm not going to focus on it so much anymore. That's when God opened the door for me and things came up and we met, mm -hmm. you know, you have I, another example. I, I just had another thought. Yeah. If you make your choice for who, whom you want to marry or get into a relationship with, and then you build a case around that, Mm -hmm. <laughs> that would be idolizing the person and or marriage and then trying to figure out reasons for why it could or should work. Yes. And so, it's, again, it's a cart, if, cart ahead of the horse type of example mm -hmm. if, of choosing someone based upon outward appearance or first impressions and then finding reasons to justify the red flags that you're seeing or to ignore them. Yeah. Versus the flip side of this, that scenario would be to ask pointed questions that dive deep into each other's mission in life, your vision for life. Yeah. And what are your peculiar, what is your peculiar, uh, the peculiar way in which you love others well, that's unique from anyone else on earth. Yeah. What are all of your dreams and goals and desires mm -hmm. for all the different categories of life? Define yeah. those things and then ask the question, are you both coachable and teachable? If you mm -hmm. check mark, check off all those boxes, so highly, it's highly likely that you have, you've met your match or a very good match. Mm -hmm. Then you don't have to try to justify anything, explain anything, and trust okay. that you're building on a solid foundation. So don't make your choice and then try to build a case around your choice and try to justify things that good. look weak yeah. in, in the foundation. You know, the other thing I we hear is that I want to be married. And if I'm not married, I'm not full. I'm not complete. And I'm, um, I'm missing something. Right? So that also puts marriage as an idol. And then when you achieve that, a lot of times people say, okay, well, now I'm married. That goal is finished. I've like, arrived. I'm, I'm done. Yay, I'm married, so now I am the person I'm supposed to be, and that's it. And then they're like, okay, and what's next? What is my next goal in life? Well, guess what? Marriage is not an end goal. Marriage is continual growth, actually. It's the beginning of a journey. It's just the beginning of the journey. Yoking up with someone is the beginning of that growth journey together now to achieve your mission and your purpose here on earth together. Marriage also helps for, uh, grow you up and mature you and work out those things in your heart that the Lord wants to deal with 
that can only be dealt with when you are very, very close to another person. Yeah. There's triggers in your life that will never be revealed until you're married. And yep. the Lord would love to deal with those things, but you, you need to allow yourself to get close enough to somebody to allow those things to be triggered and exposed so that you can be healed. Yeah. And so marriage is also a refining process to prepare us for eternity yeah. and to then leave a legacy behind mm -hmm. in the form of our children mm -hmm. to carry on where we left off. And so ultimately marriage isn't about us. It's about God's plan. It was his idea, not mm -hmm. man's idea. God blessed and sanctified marriage from the beginning. Yeah. It was a commandment in the beginning before sin and the fall. There was never any question in the ancient Hebrews minds that marriage is absolutely God's heart, his perfect will, and he doesn't defend singlehood anywhere. If you look at uh, any scriptures that seem to support singlehood, whether it's eunuchs or supposedly Paul, uh, which is debatable at best, if you really dig into it from the Hebrew perspective. Uh, Single in your heart he onto was, something. It was, it was speaking, he was either a widower or else he was talking to married women to be single unto their wives, not be sleeping around with other men's wives. Mm -hmm. uh, so you have to read all the scriptures through the lens of what was God's heart and or original plan and yeah. then ask yourself, okay, how would I read those scriptures through the lens and perspective of what God designed at the beginning? Yeah. So we are absolutely in favor of marriage. Your journey might be that of you need to deal with some things mm -hmm. so that you can you know, sustain marriage. Exactly. But it's not about avoiding marriage because, you know, it's not going to work for you or there's, yeah, you know, your bad examples of the past can uh, absolutely create a narrative in your story to where you limit yourself mm -hmm. and recognize there's nobody out there for me. Well, okay. There's 8 billion people in the world. You're the only snowflake that's worth, that's worth something. <laughs> I mean, we've got to be real honest with ourselves, but. And you also don't want to just jump into it. And so I wanted to share that little ending yeah. uh, to bring balance that we are for marriage, but also don't build a case around your decision when the case is weak. Yeah. Find the important things first yeah. Yeah. and then make your decision based upon what you discover as you ask questions and get to know the person. Yeah. And, you know, it's interesting. I was just thinking of this fact that marriage in the way is, is your job and career. If you look at it from a business point of view, when you go get a job, a lot of times people say, okay, bring your resume and show me what do you already have on your resume that qualifies you to apply for this job, right? Well, we should have that for marriage as well. And um, I believe when you are getting married in the court house or you're getting your license, right? Marriage license. You actually have to go through a specific course and that's you need to prepare. And why? Because when you are partnering up with your business partner in a way, right, for life, you are also bringing the things from the past, your skills, your preparation and tools that you have with you into that marriage and your partner does the same. And just know that it's not just going to be flowers and butterflies and rainbows. You are also bringing the, the life and the triggers and trauma that you already may be acquired in your life, right? And spiritual warfare. So now you are marrying all of that. And you need to have the tools and stamina and character to go through those things together. Because you're marrying each other's war. Exactly. Exactly. So think of that. It is very important of your, like the preparation time is important and also choosing the per the right person is important. Unless the preparation period is being extended as a scapegoat for not taking action. Right, yeah. <laughs> so, and again, there's so much we can go into it, you know, there, but if you're putting marriage above god that's idolatry right and that we have a great scripture on that and i know jesse already that's has it basically exodus 20 verse 3 you shall have no other gods before me mm -hmm. so really simple marriage a person a thing anything that comes before god 
is idolatry. We know that, right? And again, I there's a lot of a lot of you singles out there that do use God and your relationship with God as a scapegoat for taking responsibility in developing the the specific parts of you that would yeah. actually move you towards marriage and put you out there. Mm -hmm. uh, so everything in balance. There's a flow and a balance to everything. Yeah. There's there's always this and that. There's a counterpart to everything, mm -hmm. and so whatever we say could probably be taking taken out ways. of context. And oh, they believe this or that, you know. Yeah. Well, so that's why we kind of bring the balance of things out right. to to bring perspective. Yeah, that we're saying this to bring the pendulum back into mm -hmm. balance, but that doesn't mean we're negating this. No, so. Marriage is a beautiful design from God, right? It's a gift from God. You need to have the right tools to make it extraordinary. And that's what we're saying. Preparation for marriage and choosing a person well will make marriage beautiful and will fulfill what you were here to do. That's right. That's all there is to it, really. Right? Yep. All right. See you next time. Bye, guys. Be blessed. We love you.